so I'm going to read Susan's bio to you because I want to edify her properly, but then I'm going to tell you just how fun and fabulous she is. So Susan's originally from the salon industry. She is the former owner of an organic line of skincare and cosmetic company. She is a successful veteran of the network marketing industry and has risen to the top of two companies. She's currently number 31 globally, leading a team of almost 200,000. You guys, can you even imagine? Woo -woo. Um, for Susan, this is a family business. Her daughter, Chelsea Lauren, is top 100 star ambassador who is being recognized as celebration as the number one global business of the year. She will be the 13th millionaire on Susan's team. Are you guys, can you even imagine? Like, think about how many six-figure income earners she has. If she has 13 seven-figure income earners, Susan's passion is in building belief in the network marketing industry and the skills necessary to develop sustainable consumer networks. So I will tell you, I had like heard of Susan Miller and heard of Susan Miller and I recognized this beautiful woman at our conference, but I never like put the name and that face together. Like I recognized her and I, you know, she and her husband type of thing. And then I kept hearing and a few years ago, I think it was 2018. It may have been 2019. I don't remember. But Susan Miller at our leadership convention, you had to qualify manager and above to be there. She did this training on what she called the pencil pitch. And I was like, oh my gosh, it made the most perfect sense. And it was along the lines of if you've ever read Rich Dad, Poor Dad in the cash flow quadrant and just understanding leveraged income, you know, residual income and how our compensation really is beneficial when you like tap into the value of the binary. And I was in absolute awe. But in addition to her training, she was this just powerhouse that could command the room. She was so poised. You know, she's from Boston. She's a little bit edgy, but she just had business acumen that impressed me. That it wasn't just the rah-rah. It wasn't the hype. It wasn't the Kool-Aid. And I thought she's so smart. She's so educated. Like I'm doing what this woman says. And she's one of our top leaders that continues to pour into the entire field. We are not financially linked. I learned from her at our masterminds, the corporate masterminds that are for top 100. We had the pleasure of sitting by each other a couple of times in Fiji, and I just saw her warm heart and really just her love for family and love for the industry. And we were chatting about a few things. I said, will you please do a call for mine and Jess's team? Like, I know everybody is just going to love it. So with no further ado, I want to introduce Miss Susan Miller to you all. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. I'm so impressed with this team. Like I'm looking at all your names. I'm like, wow, this is a team. I mean, I'm all about the team build. You know, that is what network marketing is about, guys. So, you know, when anybody asks me to coach or train on it, I'm like, you know, I think that there's been this um, confusion because there's so many ways to make money today, right? And so, for me, it's like to get real clear about the difference between affiliate marketing and social selling and network marketing. And there's a real big difference. And the number one difference is team. And that's why you guys coming together, like there are some powerhouses on this team right now. So I'm pretty impressed myself. Um, tell me how I can guide you, if you wouldn't mind, give me a little bit of a guidance of what you'd like me to share. Yep. Um, I've got some questions ready and I'll type them to you too. If you want to be able to look back at our text, just, I know sometimes we get carried away and we, you know, get excited and we're like, what were we going to talk about? But I honestly would love for you to just open up with your story. You know, what you were doing before, how you got introduced to network marketing, what made you kind of pop over to Isogenics and just kind of let some people get to know you. Well, it, I didn't pop over because it took them over 10 years to get me, to be honest with you. <laughs> I was, um, I started off my life as a hairdresser. I was not afforded the opportunity to go to college. So I put myself through hairdressing school. I, I loved being in the salon industry because it was very artistic, very social. Um, and I ended up moving to, I'm from Boston, but I moved to South Florida at the time following my then boyfriend, now husband of um, over 40 years. So um, was living in South Florida, loving being in the industry. I was introduced to, um, back then it was actually multi-level marketing. It was a company called New Skin and um, I was not interested. I thought in my mind, I'm thinking pink Cadillacs and home party plans. And it just wasn't something that I thought I'd be interested in. But ironically, um, at the time, they were marketing a product that was for hair regrowth. So they were targeting the salon industry. And so being in that salon industry, obviously, I was one of the people that was spoken to. And um, I went to a meeting simply out of curiosity at this point, because so many people had asked me. And I walked into a room, there were over 350 people in the room with, first of all, blew my mind that there were 350 people in a room about a 
this kind of, I thought it was a product that they were selling. It was an opportunity that they were marketing, but half of the people were men. And I'm like, well, what am I missing? Because something's here that I'm not getting. I'm not putting two and two together. And so I walk up and I sit in the front of the room and there are two men presenting on top of it. And they happen to be from Boston. I could tell the minute they open their mouths. And one guy was from the finance industry. The other guy was from the real estate industry. And the things that they were talking about were not the product, even though they did bring up everybody across the stage and they asked everybody, what's your favorite product? But other than that, they were talking about this idea um, of leverage residualized income, which I personally, um, I was 20, my, it was my daughter's age, to be honest with you. I was 27, 28 years old at the time. And I'm like, well, what the hell is that? I understood what, you know, if you sold a book and you made a royalty, you know, or a song, I got that, but no one ever spoke about it back then. We're talking about 30 years ago, guys, this was back in the late 1980s. And so, um, to be honest, the gentleman at one point said he was making $50,000 a month. And I didn't hear anything else after that. I was like, what? How, how are you making that kind of money? So I walked up to him at the end of the meeting and I said, two things. One, can you prove you're making that kind of money? And two, can you show me exactly how you did it? And he said, yes, I could. I can prove it to you. And he did. And then the second thing he said to me is that um, I can show you, but you'd have to be a really good student. And I said, I am an excellent student. You show me how you're making that money in my industry that I am not making. I own the salon. I mean, I own the cosmetic company at the time in the salon industry. Um, and um, he did. And eight months later, I replaced my full-time six-figure income. And four months after that, I replaced my husband's full-time six-figure income, which he had owned a property and casualty company. And together now at this point, we're 28 years old. We're looking at each other. And we said, you know what? I'm going to sell my company. He goes, I'm going to sell my company. Our parents back home thought we were in a cult. I'm not going to lie. We're like, no, it was a culture. And it was a culture of entrepreneurs. But back then, that wasn't even a word. I mean, it wasn't something that we talked about. This is before the internet, guys. This was where you literally had to pick up the phone and speak to somebody. You couldn't text them um, or you had to meet with them. And um, we actually had tremendous success. I traveled all around the world. It's kind of ironic because in that company, I was actually introduced to this business from a financial standpoint. That's what they were presenting. The compound effect, the word of mouth being the most credible and cost-effective way of bringing a product to market, and the idea that you don't have to be the focal point of your income. And for somebody who owned a cosmetic company that I was responsible for all the, all the inventory, the accounts receivable, the payroll, everything, this was of interest. And I didn't know at the time I was actually looking. That's why I always say you always have to ask because you just never know. You have to cast a vision because people don't know what they don't know. And so all of a sudden I'm, I'm finding myself extremely excited about an opportunity I didn't even know was a reality before that evening. Um, I ended up traveling the world and I ended up creating the number one selling video for that company, but it was the product video. And it's because it was such a heavily bought up top down, which is the business opportunity. It needed the balance of the product. I think I actually, ironically, here's your video. It's a VHS. Okay. Tells you how dated I am on that one. But, you know, in this company, you can tell I did the business opportunity video. And the reason being is because we were such a heavily driven product company. We needed the balance of the business opportunity as well, because both of them matter, right? Whether you come in, which we refer, we refer to top down being through a business approach. And I don't mean it just a money. It's casting a vision of what that money can do. The compound effect, the pencil pitch, if you will. And then of, co of course, the convergence of trends that are happening right now in the economy. So it was more economically driven storyline, as opposed to, I can show you how to lose weight or how to use a skincare product, which is what we were in that company. The thing is, is that Lauren, I left that industry because I had built the company. I became one of the youngest millionaires in that company. Um, we would build our teams, but they would start to fall apart after a short period of time. And then we'd build them again and they would fall apart. And we're like, what the heck is happening? And what we realized in hindsight, which was 2020, is that multi-level marketing is really hard. <laughs> and what was hard about it was the compensation plan. Not the building of the team, not the movement of the product, but how you paid your people. And so I ended up deciding after I had Chelsea, she was about two years old, is that I literally walked away from the industry for 15 years. And once you've had a lot of success in this industry, everyone calls you. Um, and I said no to everyone, including Kathy Coover when she called me in 2002. Yeah. 
I didn't start here until 2012. So there was a big, there was a 10 year gap before they got me. And Patty Cepeda called me in around 2008, I think it was. And I said no to her too. And I tell people that's on me. But here's the thing. Why did I say no to Kathy? Because I wasn't open, right? In my mind, it was still multi-level marketing. I didn't even give her a chance to explain it to me. I was just like, you know, I just had another baby. It wasn't the right time in my life. And I made that as my excuse. But the truth is I wasn't open. And when Patty called me, I just started a skincare company. And so I, it wasn't the right time in my life. I had invested a quarter of a million dollars in launching a skincare company. So I'm like, I always tell people all the time, there are two things you have no control over, whether people are open and if it's the right time in their life. And so that's why I always ask people, are you open? And is this the right time in your life to take a look at a financial opportunity? Because what I market is the financial opportunity surrounded by some amazing, incredible products supported by a company that's going to be here for like for generations to come. It's a legacy company. And so when I finally came into Isogenics, it was 2012 when Kathy Coover called me again. And I always tell people it was just a really good day when she called because I was open and it was the right time in my life. Oh my gosh. I love that. I'm like trying to type as fast as I can. And it's, it's so true. And I, I love just the honesty of that, you know, that it did take a while and the other things you've been going through, but we've heard us say like time and time again, you know, that it, all those things have to align. There's um, a gal, she's actually has a success story. She's sharing um, at celebration and she was enrolled. And a couple of years later, she came back when she was actually ready to build the first time it was a nine day system. And then, you know, the pandemic had hit and she was in a totally different season. And so that someone had planted the seed way back when about the opportunity about this, that she kind of knew that it was available. And many people um, on our call right now don't know this, but I had been enrolled in 2008 um, with a nine day system just for the cleanse. And I did it and moved on. I knew nothing about the industry, nothing about this. And then in 2013, got re-enrolled. And Jani Elo, my mentor, um, she can see both positions, you know, and it's, it's crazy to think, you know, there was five years in between and um, it just wasn't the timing. So I love that you chat about that. Um, one of the things that I would love for you to really just kind of deep dive into, and you've touched on it a little bit, but just the legitimacy of the network marketing model. And I'm going to find your pencil pitch recording and I can put the link in here so people can go watch it. But there's still so many people that are skeptic about the business model or have been burned or think that we are an MLM. And there's just no one more poised and skilled and experienced to touch about that. But I'd love for you to kind of take it away with that. Well, you're talking to the right person for that because my val my my conviction of this industry is solid. Like there, I could sit in the, you know, the rooms with the top CEOs in the in this country, and nobody could shake my references. And that's really where you need to come from when you it, it at least should be the goal that you want to get to a point where you have such conviction in what you're doing that you are the person that has the strongest belief in the room because at the end of the day that's who wins right and so for me it was my experience so i went through this industry so i'm somebody who owned a cosmetic and skincare company i was in traditional business my husband was in a traditional business as well we were we were entrepreneurial so from the time i was 25 years old my husband and i both owned our own businesses and in the traditional world i will tell you something that i can look back now 30 years and i will tell you any time any day of the week, given an opportunity to align myself with a, with a company that would take on the financial burden of operations, overhead, accounts receivable, payroll, inventory, and all that. And all I have to do is partner with them. And I can still own my business, but I don't have to take on that responsibility, the weightiness of that responsibility. You know, there's a reason why small-based businesses go out of business because the majority of the people that run them have no knowledge of how to scale them right? That is the hardest part of a business is how to scale it. And so, you know, we all can get started doing what we do best, whatever it is that you do for a living uh, when you start a, a, a business. But why do you think franchising became so powerful, right? Why did people spend millions of dollars to align themselves with the franchise? It's because of the systems that they put in place, right? It's because they took on all of that responsibility. They figured it out. I always use the movie, The Founder. How many people have watched the movie, The Founder? I use it as an example for my team all the time and tell them, you know, look, it's a wonderful movie to watch to really get like skills on it, right? They took a speedy system, which was the McDonald brothers, bringing a product to the online consumer, right? That was something that people didn't have. That was something delivering product fast to that online consumer, but it was the system around it that mattered. But then there was another part of the movie that they said, um, I think it was a guy in the bank. Has anybody seen the movie? Like a show of hands or, oh gosh, 
you guys need to watch it this weekend if you haven't seen it. It's like that good of a movie. There's so many lessons in it. And one of them was that the guy said, I don't think you know the industry you're in. And this is, he was saying it to Ray Kroc. And he goes, well, what do you mean? He goes, well, you're not in the shake and hamburger business. You're in the real estate business. And he goes, well, what do you mean by that? He goes, own the real estate, own the business. And I'm saying this to you today because I want you to understand is own the real estate, own your business. What's your real estate? It's your team. It's not your product. The product is a speedy system. It's the product that's going through the end line consumer. But the real estate that you own is the building of that team. And so for me, network marketing is by far the best industry in the world when done right. And I'm the first person to tell you it has been draw, done wrong many, many times by whether the company or it's the person being trained how to market the product before they were trained how to build a business. And so I was just blessed with the fact that I was taught day one that this was about building a network of which a highly consumable, emotional, result-oriented product went through that network right? And so I build what's called a sustainable consumer network. But the sustainable part is you want to build a, a network of people who have a vested interest in staying with your products for life. Who's that person? It's not your customer, guys. The person who has a vested interest is the person who owns the business with you. We're our best customer, right? Who's going to keep buying every single month? I literally have new skin products sitting on my desk today. Why? 30 years later, I left that company from a business standpoint 30 years ago, okay? Or 25 plus years ago. Why do I still order a product from them today? And everyone will always tell me, oh, you must love the product. I said, that is not why. <laughs> it's not. I buy it because they pay me to be a loyal consumer of them. I still earn a product, earn an income today because I consume loyalty to their product and I built something that is still sustainable. Now, I'll tell you right now, if it had the isogenic compensation plan, I would not be with isogenics. I would still be with, with New Skin. But their compensation plan is antiquated. And it's not even their fault. The industry had to evolve. It had to have any industry worth its weight eventually is going to figure itself out. It just happened to be that isogenics is the leader in that industry. It's the fact that we figured it out that the compensation plan, we can build two teams, especially if you can use a team dynamic where you can put people underneath each other. In my previous company and a lot of your network, your multi-level marketing companies, you had to build alongside each other, which meant every time you signed somebody up, you were opening up a brand new team store. That meant I had to build another team. Every time I signed somebody up, I had to build another team underneath them. That's crazy. Can you imagine that today? We had to build 12 to get paid on six. We have to build two to get paid on everyone, infinity. And instead of capping us on our levels, which is why would they cap you on levels? Well, all you have to do is follow the pencil pitch. Where's the compound effect? If you double a penny every single day for 30 days, where's the biggest volume? It's on the lowest levels, right? Well, they're capping you at a very high level before you even hit the 10th day because that compound, they want to keep you from making that money. And that was the biggest challenge about the industry is that there's so many criteria to keep from paying you. So when I came out, Kathy Coover flew me out and I brought my then 18 year old daughter with me to take a look at what the company was about. And it happened to be NYKO. And she said, sit through the weekend and then we'll meet on Monday. And I sat there in the audience and I'm going to tell you right now, it was quite emotional for me because I forgot. I forgot how much I loved this industry and what it was. It was the people. Because see, the people in the network marketing space are the people that see the cup half full, not half empty. There are people that are willing to show up in their own life. They're entrepreneurial. They're hungry for something. And they're looking for guidance and more. And they're willing to learn and grow and do, right? And so they're the best people in the world. They're the people that, you know, they're not complaining about life. They're making a difference. They're doing something about it. And they'll, at the very end of that weekend, they brought everybody up on stage. And they said, everyone on that stage was earning over six figures that year. Not the average income taking the people that were making the most money and the people that were making the least money and averaging it out. That was the smoke and mirrors of this industry of the past. I hated it more than anybody. You know, I when I left this industry, it's because I, I lost belief in it, right? I didn't go and jump to another company. I just quietly retired from it. And that's why I can still earn my income today from what I built back then. 
I didn't try to hijack my team and take them to another company. I'm not, I'm not big on that guys, right? When people work really hard to build something, I'm not one to want to go down and tear somebody else's business apart from them because I've had it happen to me many times, but I will tell you when I saw, and I'll have to show you, like, if I can look up on the top of my, can you see those big checks way up there? <laughs> they used to be that they were like this big because they had they had over 300 people on that stage. And now they're like this size, right? Because they can't fit them everybody on the stage. There's so many people up on that stage, right? Um, having their picture taken that earned that income that year. And I'm sitting there going, they got it right. They figured it out. And when I found out how they allowed you to put people underneath each other and they removed that you actually could be a consultant, just you plus two, and you can earn $700,000 a year. Now, I would tell you, you're better off being an executive because you're teaching a behavioral pattern that is duplication, right? Which is what we teach. But the fact that you didn't have to be one to get paid on that income was unheard of in my world. And so I always say that, you know, as Jim Kuva likes to say, I think that's a clue. They got it right. There are so many people that have had success in this company. You don't have to fight the compensation plan to get made, to make money. You actually have to learn a skill set, right? Which is what? Our skill set is how to bring a product to the inline consumer. We do two things. We recruit business people and we have customer acquisition. And I know when Kathy Cooper wrote a book, Resilience, um, she asked 20 people to be interviewed and I was one of them. And Jim had asked her, did any one of the people stand out? And she mentioned it, I stood out. And it was for this specific reason, because Kathy and I built very similar. And she said that because Susan goes in and puts the infrastructure of her business, I look for my business people first, and then collectively we go get our customers. And it's no different than if I was opening up a salon, right? And if I was going to be a solo entrepreneur, I'd have one chair in that salon and I would just focus on myself. But there's never a time I'm asking my customer to be a hairdresser. And, you know, in this industry, we have a tendency to do that. And there's nothing wrong with us using our customer as our feeder group to cultivate them and see if there's some interest there and bring them in through the product. There's nothing wrong with that at all. However, there's a lot of people that kind of, you know, bait and switch some of their customers and made them feel uncomfortable that they had to do the business with them. And that's not something that we want to do. We want to look for people that actually want to do the business with us. So I ask you, do you keep your eyes open and make money outside of what you currently do? Do you have a residual income component to your income? Are you open? Is this the right time? If I could show you how, would you? And so I'm looking for people that want to build a business first, because why? Business people duplicate, right? Business people recruit other people. And again, who is your best customer? Always is your business builders. We don't just try one product. We use every product. So one business builder could be 10 customers to you because the amount of product that we consume, not just for ourselves, but our whole family. And so your business builders are always your best customer. And that's why I look for them first. And then we go out and find 10 or 20 customers that we, we support over the lifetime of our business build. And that is the difference. That's why network marketing, you know, and I have actually a slide that I use with my team and I'm going to pull it up for a second so I can show people. I said, you know, when you think of network marketing, right, it is accumulation of the most powerful ways we have of making money today. What are that? Drop shipping influencer marketing and coaching. All three of those people will do that individually as a means of making money, but we've been doing it. It's like the grandfather of all of them. We've been doing that forever. The only thing that's new to this really is drop shipping because we used to have to have the product brought to our home and then we disseminate it to our customers. Can you imagine how burdensome that was? <laughs> You'd have to buy your products and then ship it back out again. We don't have to do that anymore. So it streamlined the model. So what we are is a virtual franchise. And so what's the relationship in network marketing? I tell people all the time, the network marketing company, they take on the support of the product and the e-commerce platform. And that, that is the biggest and most expensive part of your financial model, right? Of building your business. So they're doing the websites, the tracking, the customer service, the delivery system, the events, right? The trips, the promotions, and the commission structure. They handle all of that for you. So what do we do as a network marketing professional is all we have to do is be the business recruiter, put the infrastructure in place of our business, and then have customer acquisition. Again, your business builder 
is also your best customer. And so if given a choice, give me a business builder over a traditional customer all day long, because my business builder is going to consume a heck of a lot more than just my customer who may just come and go over the years, right? And so what do we do in the field is we do training and support. We show them the simple systems. We're the leadership, right? We're the community and we're the team events. That's what we do. And with clarity for people, you know, it comes the ability to succeed is with clarity, right? When, you, when you're confused is when people don't get anything accomplished, right? Confused people do nothing. And so I just spend as much of my time as possible starting my people on the right path. And that's by asking them. I think if anybody have heard my daughter talk about the four um, careers of network marketing, have you all heard that? No? Really? Okay. And, and Okay. So <laughs> that's a big one. <laughs> Okay, so uh, you know how I did the pencil pitch, right? And my daughter, so I think you asked me about Chelsea, she actually came on board at 18 years old, but she was going off to business school for the next four years. And I didn't want her to be focusing on, you know, building a business when it at a quarter of a million dollars to go to college, <laughs> I wanted her to go to college, right? And so I signed her up as a top person on my team leg. And then I brought my spouse in on my inside leg, which is what we teach everybody. And then I built one leg, which is what we teach. Now, it's like go go director down that leg and then you go director down the other leg and then you go back and you and you build strength. This is just how we build. You can go back and forth and back and forth or pick one team at a time. It's not rocket science. You can do whatever your leadership is teaching you to do, okay? However, I will tell you that this whole point of what we're doing here is creating a team. And so by stacking people on top of each other and exciting people and letting that person feel that they're part of something bigger than themselves, right? And then aligning all these people. And if you find two or three people in one team that want to build together, put think of them in a rowboat all rowing in the same direction, having a same business plan together, you're going to start to see things take off, right? And so that's how we build. And then we go build the other team. So the way that we did the Robert Kiyosaki, which would be, you know, the, uh, empl you know, the employee mindset, the small base business owner is the left side of the quadrant, the right side of the quadrant is big business and investor, right? The right side of the quadrant is going to be your, your leveraged income. The left side is your linear exchanging time for money. This is active income, do something, get paid. This is passive income, build something and have it continue to pay you. So my daughter took that same model, okay? And she. so I would say to you that on the top left-hand side would be your social seller, 20% right? That we make. The bottom left-hand side is going to be your small base business owner, your solo entrepreneur, the person with the chair cutting hair, right? Basically functioning by running their own business, but they're not really recruiting other business builders. They're recruiting social sellers, basically people who want to share the product. On the right-hand side is going to be your leader and then your CEO. So your leader is your big business person and your CEO is your investor. The CEO invests in the team people who spend all their time investing and building that team. And so the interesting part about this is there's a mindset beside it all. So the social seller mindset is like, this is a capped income. You're exchanging time for money. And the mindset is, I don't really, I don't really want to figure out how to do this. If you show me how to do it, tell me what to do. I'll do it. If you want me to post a link, I'll post a link. Great. You want to have a lot of social sellers on your team, but they come and go guys, right? They're really just looking for, you know, temporary income, but maybe you can cultivate a few of them into being a small based business owner. That's why I tell you the, that, that person who's the customer or who's the social seller, the sharer, you know, you might be able to use it as a feeder group and cultivate a few of them that might want to build their business, which I'm sure many of you have done. That's a bottom up build. Let me show you how to get your products paid for. Let me show you how to supplement your income. And so the small based business owner, the most of them make between 20 and 30 and $40,000 a year. Okay. But some of them can make an upwards of 150 to 200. And you would think that that's a leader, but to be honest with you, it's a mindset because a small based business owner, the practice, the behavior of that person is saying, you know, don't tell me what to do, but I don't really want to tell other people what to do. I don't really want to lead a team. I really just want to lead myself right? There's nothing wrong with that. And there's a lot of people on our team. Matter of fact, they make up the majority of our team are going to be your small space business owners and your social sellers. And when you understand that and you allow people to self-select, where do you see yourself? Do you want to supplement your income? Are you just looking to really have control over your time? What are, what are your goals and incentives for that? That person is looking for time flexibility, control over one's time, right? They're looking for recognition. They like to be able to win the trips. They're really good at LIA right? Because they're really good at tell me what to do. I'll get this done. I'll figure it out, right? 
I'll get my points in, I'll win my trips. And that's a really important person on your team. However, how many people came into this business for the purpose of being able to create something that's bigger than themselves, that want to have passive income, just by a show of hands? Okay. For those people, you have to get to the right-hand side of the quadrant. And the only way to get to the right-hand side of the quadrant is to recruit other small-based business owners who recruit the social sellers, right? So you have to be willing to build a team. And the mindset, the leader is really a mindset. So when I recruit somebody into the business, I ask them, are you looking for supplemental replacement or, or um, residual income? Which one of these are most exciting to you? We always have to start with the basics and build our way up. But if someone just says to me, look, I just want to supplement my income. I just want to, I'd love to replace my income. I know what my job is. I'm going to show them how to use our systems, whether it's through the product or through recruiting. And I'm going to show them our systems and how to best execute them, right? Fall in love with our products and what have you. But if they say to me, I want residual income, I'd like to create wealth for my family. That's a mindset. And so what's their primary belief to that person is I want to lead a team. I want to feel confident enough of myself and responsible enough that I can lead a team of other people. And so the leader is recruiting other leader type people with mindset for that and small based business owners and social sellers. Start to make sense to you guys? And what are their driving incentives? They want to speak. They want to be on the front of the stage. They want to get up and at the convention, right? They want to be training their teams. They want to speak on the Zoom calls. They want to uh, win trips and rewards. They want to be in the top 100, right? They want, to, they want to win awards. It's important to them, right? And this is a great thing. Recognition is really important. And time and financial flexibility is a big draw for them. And the last one is your CEO. And what is the CEO? That's something you evolve into. It's when you have other leaders. And so the, the mindset of a CEO is somebody, and this is the bottom right-hand side of the quadrant. These are people who are investing in their team. These are people like myself, right? These are people like Lauren, like Jen, like other people who are leading other leaders, right? So we recruit leaders who then recruit small base business owners, who then recruit social sellers. Is it starting to show a picture for you here. And so what is the belief of that person is they are, com they are uh, completely confident and independent of their own income. They're not the ones creating the income anymore. They're supporting the team that's creating the income. Okay. And they don't have to be the most important person in the room because their team is. So I always use the example of, and I'll, I'll say they're incentivized by impact legacy right? Having big, massive income. These people have unlimited income potential. And that's something you evolve into. But it is, again, a mindset. Would you agree? When you start off, when you recruit somebody, and you can say to them, which career do you see yourself in? And when you identify that, now Chelsea has a video you can watch. Um, I'll get it to you, Lauren, okay? Because I don't know it off the top of my head. I thought oh, most people have seen it. We've I put it up on the MLM Nation. I found the podcast that she was interviewed on, but I haven't found the video yet. I was looking. Okay, Were you? okay. I'll get it to you guys. Okay. Um, it's well, a short just put it in there. Okay, it's the full Thank career you. network marketing. And basically what she did was she took the Robert Kiyosaki model and she just helped people identify who they want to be because the biggest mistake we make as network marketers is we think everybody want, wants what we want and they don't. And it's easier to identify what people want so we can better serve them and help them achieve it. Does that make sense? I'm happy to answer any questions if you have on it. Oh my gosh, you are on fire. I don't even know if you saw the text that I sent you, but I was like, you're like flowing. I didn't. And I said, she doesn't even look down at her phone. I don't even think she realizes all of the uh, things that you covered. I, I was going to ask you, they're just like seamlessly put together. So if you guys have any questions or anything, definitely throw them in the chat. Um, and Susan, for the last couple minutes, why we have you, because I mean, honestly, if you look at the little notes, I was talking about the binary and how you build a team and how you can kind of get everybody running together. I mean, you didn't even look down in the time I text that and you yeah. just kind of nailed it. But the two things that I would love to just ask you to kind of touch about, and then we'll see if there's other questions in the chat or anything you want to close with. One is the importance of events and why celebration, like there's some people still on the fence and I know they're like, oh, it's sold out. And I'm like, oh my gosh, so many of us are sitting on tickets. Like you got to go, you know, to talk about that, but to piggyback on everything you were just saying about the binary and about getting a team working together, 
And even what you were saying a little bit about LIA and how people are winning the trips, but it's not creating the cycle growth. And I actually was chatting with a few ladies today on this call because it was kind of a shock when they were understanding that the executive leadership pools are changing based on how they were. And I was like, this is not a bad thing. Like, you don't understand how much more money we made way back you know, years and years ago when it was all based on 4PET growth, not only from the pools, but in cycles because it was a different focus and a different skill set. And I don't think there's anybody in the company, you know, I was the last top 100 call. I was like, I can't wait to have her on our call, you know, but to talk really about that and the importance and switching to this, for those of you that weren't on the all associate call, the 10K relay which is replacing our executive pools. It's being, you know, extended to what they're calling the 5K relay. So instead of it being a three-month contest, it's a one-month contest, you know, each commission month, but it's paying out to $5,000 a month. But as opposed to our current pools where you have to be an executive, this is not rank specific. I mean, a consultant can come in here and earn in these pools, but it is based on driving the line and depth and duplication and looking beyond that kind of initial or second level in your organization. But I would love for you to talk about that, Susan, and the way you're coaching your team to earn in those. Okay. So if you saw the pencil pitch, right, you know that the whole point of network marketing is the compound effect. It's about being, it's much bigger than your efforts. It is a compounded effort. And my, I've always had a challenge with the LIA because first of all, with the words, it should be a BIA. It's a builder in action. It is a very important structure to learn, but it is the beginning. So I always tell people it's a three month, three to six month learning curve. In that three to six month learning curve, you're going to learn a lot of different skills, right? One of them being personal production, right? Then it's being team development. Okay, the first three months is personal protection, and the next three months you're you're learning team development. And the thing is, is that if you don't shift to team development, you will always be on the left hand side of the quadrant. Period. It's just not even possible. You have to create depth. You you want to be the least important person on your team, and if you're focused on LIA, where it's always about your personal production. And I'm not telling you not to be a recruiter. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying it's you recruit and develop. You recruit and develop. So there's different times in your build that you, if you're the recruiter, okay, let me say it better this way. Okay, this is what I try. This is what I do with all my team, especially if you've been around for a while. Go in your back office. Look at all the people that at one time said yes to the business. Look at the people that said that are saying they want to do it, but they aren't in action yet, right? And get your people in the pair, in the, in the, in the, the progression of how they came in. Right. And then talk to them one on one and get them reengaged, show them the, the, the video, casting a vision of the financial opportunity today is greater than it's ever been in the history of this industry. I promise you right now, the convergence of trends that are happening right now in our world are driving people to the network marketing space more than they've ever been before in history. The people have been more open to this. And the more we cast the vision and help people understand it, the better it'll be for all for everybody, because it is a phenomenal financial model. It's a virtual franchise where we don't have to have the brick and mortar. Now, Okay, check. We understand network marketing is amazing. Now you have to understand how the team build is. And you want everybody rowing in the same direction, but not everybody has the same skill set. So for instance, if you're the recruiter, let's just say you just love recruiting, right? What I find with recruiters is they don't actually like to do team development as much. So then you get somebody else in your team, you know, you know what? We need a good team developer. Who's somebody that really likes to do calls for other people, nurture that person, help people do an 11 day, somebody who's really good with the product coaching, somebody that's really go with different skill sets on your team think about any kind of sport right that a team sport not everybody can be the quarterback you need skills in other areas on your team and this way you don't have to make people get so uncomfortable i mean we should all know how to recruit but not everybody's great at it not everybody's great at personal development not everybody's great at skill sets of helping people and working with them but you put a team together that does Think of it like a real business, put them in the same boat and then let everybody work together. We put threads together. So I have my, my focus leg and my team leg thread of my builders only. And I, if I have a big player coming in, I'd be like making sure I'm on my thread going, Hey, listen, I've got somebody coming in. If you have anybody sitting on the fence, make sure you let them know. I'll give you 24 hours before I put the person in. And then all of a sudden you'll start to see all these enrollments going in. That's working as a team. And the compound effect is network marketing. 
Otherwise, you're just in traditional sales. And I'll be the first person to tell you, if you're going to just do sales, you should do high ticketed item sales if you want to make really big money right? Because this is about building that consumer network of people who have a vested interest in staying with your product for life. And that person is your business builder. You don't need a lot of them. Thank God. My daughter will be my, I thought she was going to be my 12th, but I just found out one of my people from Mexico are breaking uh, a convention as the 12th. So my daughter will most likely be my 13th millionaire on my team. And I know you asked me about Chelsea before, um, if we could talk about how she came on board. Remember, my daughter came in at 18 years old. She went through college. She got out of college at 22. Unfortunately, at 22, it was right around the time we were plateauing, which, by the way, is a normal process in a build. The window of opportunity is traditionally 36 to 48 months from the initial growth. Not all the time beforehand, but when you start to see the tick up going like this and it goes explosive, right? Why does it plateau? Because the leaders get tired and the speed of the pack, right? Is the speed of the leader is the speed of the pack. And when the leaders start to plateau off, the team starts to plateau off. Nothing wrong with that. Just know that it's normal. And then you have to build it again. Think of, think of Apple, right? 32 year old company before they came out with their best selling product, that phone, the iPhone. Okay. 32 year old company. You want to be with a company that continues to reinvent themselves and create new opportunities for the future. And every wave, there's a new growth of people that are going to come in and be more successful than the people before them. And that's the way it should be. That's what the compensation plan allows. And so right now, we have a 36 to 48 month window of time for everybody to put their blinders on and to, to, to identify that this is a season in your life that you don't want to miss. So my daughter missed the wave, the initial wave, because she was in college. She came out and she was during the time of the struggle of where people were trying to get something going when nothing was really happening. And then of course, 2020 happened. We would have hit our second wave if 2020 didn't happen. Okay. We would have hit it by, by then. However, my, my daughter decided at the age of 27, it's ironic because that was the time I came into network marketing. And I've always said that is the sweet spot around 27 to 37. You know, that's that window. Even I would even say to 47, that's a perfect window of time. People haven't created their success yet in life. They're still hungry for it, right? Not that there aren't other people. I was 50 when I came into isogenics, okay? So it's just that that is a sweet spot of people that are still very hungry for this. And she made a decision. You might have heard her say this. I am momentum. She was tired of waiting for the company, if you will, to put her into momentum. Well, you know what? It's not the company's job to put us into momentum. It's not even their purpose. Their job is to supply us with the infrastructure of a business. It is our job in the field to put ourselves and our teams and our company back into momentum, even our industry. And that's why I do the United Calls on Monday at noon and contribute with other leaders to try to help as many people as possible identify this as an amazing industry, teach you skills if you want to learn them on how to build a team, which is what I teach, team building, right? And then grow your business and you become the momentum. You lead the team. Because it's not until you decide that you're all in and you give up all the excuses that we give ourselves, and we've all done it, of why things aren't working or why they haven't happened or what have you, and you put your head down and you make the decision that you're all in for the next 36 to 48 months, that is when, when you ask any leader out there who's made it to the top, how they did it, they shut the world out, they put their head down, and they made it happen. That's how they did it. Mic drop. <laughs> oh my gosh, I had like turned my video off trying to unmute myself. So no good. That laser focus is so spot on. Susan, you're amazing. I, I couldn't have asked for anything greater. Jess, um, I know her video is off tonight. Jess Rigner and I, we our two teams do these together. She's like texting me right now. She's like, this is insane. This is great. And I was texting a couple girls not on. I said, this is the best team call we've had in months. I mean, you are so real, you are so raw. I love the way that you edified this industry and just really how much it's a skills-based business. And it's so fascinating. You guys, if you really think about some of the things that Jess and I say and where we learned so much from Jani Elo, she learned things from Susan Miller. Like, and that was one of the people that the she would say, like, I met. Yeah. I, I, learned from from you. I learned from Susan and Jess and I were like, who's Susan? <laughs> I have to tell you, I'm looking at the people on these, this call right here and you have the team. Like literally you have the team. 
as long as you're rowing in the same direction and you're all singing from the same hymn book, just like any franchise would have to do. I mean, Jessica's one of the best of the best, as are you, Lauren, right? I see, I, I see Holly on here, you know, I see uh, Anne here. You guys are crushing it. Right. So we need the, all of the teams in this company. No one team is going to put us back in momentum. We need the whole, all of us to come together, lock arms and together we own this industry. There are people coming after our company. And I just want to throw this out there for a second. Ask yourself why. Why is everybody trying to prospect people from Isogenics to go run to another startup company? It's because we're the real deal, guys. Okay. And these startups, I can, I just speak to, they couldn't, I am unrecruitable. Okay. They could never get me. And there's a reason they don't have a legacy plan. The fact, the chance of a brand new company ever making it is so small. Kathy and Jim will be the first people to tell you the first five years, they weren't sure they were going to make it. And they had a legacy idea. They wanted the long-term because they understood our industry. But many of these companies, and I would have to say the majority of them, have a five maximum 10-year exit strategy. What does that mean to you and I? We build it and they walk away from it. If the company's not here to deliver the product to our inline consumer, we don't have a company. We have to have that faith and trust in our company that they will be here 50, 100 years from now so that they can pay our income to our children and our children's children, right? So if we're going to build it, we're going to do our job, but they got to do theirs. And if their job is not to be here in five or 10 years, they already broke the trust right there. And I'm just here to tell you, I've been around this industry long enough to know that there's only a handful of legacy companies for a reason, because there's only a few people that actually want to do the work. Traditional business is not as fun as being in the field, is it? <laughs> That's why we're in the field, not as traditional business owners. And so, you know, so many people nowadays, they don't even want to run a company. They don't want to make the investment back into the company. They just want to make their money and run. Well, we can't have that. We need to know that the company's going to stay. And I will tell you right now, with this new investor group coming in, we have never been in a better position than we are right now in probably the last decade of being with this company. We are so ready for this growth. And we have leadership like yourself and my team and other teams out there that want this. So what do we have right now? We have a, a very talented force of people out there, network marketing professionals in the field right now in our company, and we're ready to hit a second wave. And this wave is our money wave. Why? Because we're proven. We proved our products work. We don't have to, and we also proved our compensation plan work. And now the late majority, the people that needed social proof, they're coming in because they've seen it. And we're a sure thing. All you have to do is put your head down and make it happen. That's the God's truth of it. It has nothing. I have nothing. It's so good. It's so good. You guys unmute and give Susan some massive, massive love. I mean, absolutely incredible call. Thank you so much. Thank you, it's Susan. My pleasure. Amazing, Susan. Thank, Thank you, Susan. Susan. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, Susan. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. I can't Thank wait to see you all at celebration. Thank you, Susan. Oh, Thank you. My pleasure, guys. I love this company. I love this industry. God bless you. Thank, thank you. you so much. Give your your hunky husband a big hug for us and Chelsea a huge hug. And thank you so much. Oh, wait, are you coming to you. celebration? Are you going to be able to make it? To be determined. <laughs> I'm driving it so hard. I'm asking everybody to get there, but it's like weeks before due date and I can't fly. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking you should stay home and cheer us on all, all on. How's that? <laughs> I know. I, I've, I've never missed one. It would be my 10th and I've never missed. Like, I'm like, what? Here's like, the thing. You're the CEO now, right? You don't have to be the most important person in the room because your team is. How's that? <laughs> You're the best. You're the best. You guys are great. Have a wonderful night. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody. Good night. Thank Bye. you. Good night. Good night.